Hey guys, welcome back. So now, hopping into some more talk about the Batman Who Laughs and following up with our talks about James Gordon Jr., who was recommended by the Joker, even though the Joker is doing the most to keep his distance. And mainly because the Joker believes that the dark path that the Batman Who Laughs wants to go down is a very dark one and there's no joke there. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so in the last couple of videos, or the last few videos I should say, we've talked about how the Batman Who Laughs has been giving our world's greatest detective a world of confusion. And you would think on one hand with this also being Batman, and albeit from Earth-22, but with this being Batman infused with the Joker toxin, that the Batman from Earth-0 would have an easier time figuring out his plans, especially with the cooperation of the Joker. But really we come to find out that that's not so much the case and mainly because the Batman Who Laughs has seen so much more than the Bruce Wayne from Earth Zero, which gives him a ridiculous advantage when it's all said and done. And because he has this vast knowledge of the dark multiverse, in addition to the multiverse that we've known for so long, he's able to make his plans way more elaborate than the Batman from Earth Zero just because he has way more information. And a lot of that was more likely obtained with early conversations from Barbatos in the beginning of Dark Knight's Metal, with Barbatos showing the Batman Who Laughs the dark multiverse to which the Batman Who Laughs later explored on his own, increasing more of his knowledge and pretty much just taking whatever he wanted for himself. And a lot of this we talked about on the Dark Knight's Metal playlist when I mentioned a number of the things that the Batman Who Laughs was doing that were outside of the orders of Barbatos, but more so for his personal experimentation, like a number of the portions in the Riddler's Labyrinth and him extracting Element X from Cyborg, kidnapping the Monitor, killing Red Death, like he always had some type of experiment going on in addition to collecting this knowledge of the multiverse while executing his task in correlation with Barbados. But in addition to all those things that we were aware of, we also got a number of hints of his excursions throughout the multiverse with him knowing how to kill kill the immortal man, being that he's done so so many times in different worlds. And I really wish they hadn't canceled that series, and mainly because I just want the Batman Who Laughs to be more than a six part miniseries, just so it can continue and cross over showing us the Batman Who Laughs going back, getting all this information, slaying immortal men throughout the dark multiverse, like that would never get old. But just picking up from where we had last seen, James Gordon Jr., who had been approached by his father really to figure out what the Batman Who Laughs was doing, or more so use his son James' evil genius to get a few steps ahead of the Batman Who Laughs, but when he meets with them, we come to find out that he's been actually taking his medication from Wayne Pharmaceuticals called Diaxamine 2 that caused him to think more logically, experience empathy, remorse, guilt, shame, in conjunction with the program keeping him on a strict probation, keeping him monitored around the clock, and as a result, at this point in time, James Gordon Jr. is just thinking completely different, like he's wired completely different. So much rather he's sticking to the program, he's doing his job, he's scanning the boxes. And while they're here speaking, Batman arrives much to both of their surprise because much like we'd seen before, the Joker had recommended that James Gordon Jr. is the best one to figure this out. Which wasn't something necessarily new because the Joker has complimented his work before. And a lot like we talked about in a previous video, like James Gordon Jr. from a child, for years, he had been getting away with a number of plans that got better and better or worse and worse, I mean, it just depends on which way you look at it, because <laughs> he's not doing good things, but he's good at doing things that are not good. But with both Commissioner Gordon and Batman arriving here to see him, they were in hopes of finding the old James Gordon Jr., hopefully faking to be normal, so that possibly his twisted brilliance could be put to use, with hopes that his brilliant planning could give them the slightest advantage with the Batman who laughs. But as far as Commissioner Gordon even being here, like, he came on his own. He was surprised to even see Batman show up. And even though he told his son James that he got them some time for them to talk that would be unmonitored and he wasn't here to shut down the program, only half of that was true. Because in a bit of an act of desperation, he had came here on his own to see his son, but before even coming to talk to him, he already set up for the program to be shut down, just in case it was actually working, in hopes that James Gordon Jr. would turn back to his old self, cold turkey, but mainly as a last resort. And this is information that Batman already knew before he arrived here. But with the both of them soliciting his cooperation, James Gordon Jr. does not want to be involved. And it's really the meds 
is talking because now he's feeling sorry about everything he's done and in a way he kind of feels like he deserves to be where he's at and for batman who's struggling to keep it together because he still has a joker toxin in the system he's pressing james gordon jr to snap back into his old self because the last laugh protocol to which he knows the batman who laughs is targeting to use which connects through gotham's underground waterways but because they split he needs james to show him which one and james gordon jr just looks at it like mm, i don't know which throws batman who even tells him like dude you are the best at murdering the city and even at the age of 13 you had journals with countless ways and possibilities to execute the plans that you had at 13 and when james gordon jr just walks back to the boxes so calmly and he's like always calm it's weird but when he walks back to the boxes to continue doing his work he points the scanner at the box they see the red light asking him to shut it off for the thousandth time but it's not james and it's actually the grim knight who just unloads on the three of them and it's pretty crazy when this happens especially seeing batman go face to face with the grim knight in like your western standoff fashion but instead it's an ar versus a grappling gun <laughs> but it's one of the things to keep in mind about batman even though he chooses not to use guns that doesn't mean he can't shoot and with him using the grappling gun to hook the grim knight to a passing subway train which just reminds me of our recent talks about the death of nightwing because back at the time when we had talked about this there was this game that dick grayson would always play with batman and mainly because batman's so serious most of the time and dick grayson always trying to lighten things up but just as an example with the point of this game being to free fall as low as you can and shoot your grappling hook at the latest possible moment in order to win your aim has to be more than just okay like you have to be dead on just as an example and we can go further back to old issues with batman using guns and all that but even aside from that i'll go as far to say that batman with a grappling hook has made crazier shots than batman with a gun to this day but even with batman doing this to get the grim knight out of the way for a short while it doesn't help for long because the grim knight uses automated vehicles to block them off from getting away which is one of his tricks which we touched on previously when batman initially met the grim knight and the batman who laughs had explained that in the world where the grim knight comes from he had pretty much littered wayne tech and everything automated vehicles his bullet shooting bullets <laughs> and i'm not gonna lie i'm still waiting to see a bullet shoot a bullet like that's what i'm here for <laughs> but in addition the batman who laughs had also told us that the grim knight didn't just get here and that he had been doing work in the background much like how we had seen him assist the batman who laughs in the wayne tower and when the grim knight tells batman again to hand over gordon he lets him know like hand them over or this plane that is flying over us with 72 passengers is going to blow because he has it rigged to explode and jim tells batman that he's not going to let him take his son but batman's aware that he's not the gordon that the grim knight had came to retrieve and that's mainly because the last laugh protocol needs two people to activate and of course batman chose jim gordon because he's the only person he could really trust and so from here going over to the batman who laughs who sneak attacks the penguin and doing so using the weaponry from another penguin from the dark multiverse and doing so very much with his two birds in one stone type of fashion because when he arrives here he brings in another bruce wayne who's much older and was pretty much a mob boss in his universe who rose the power above the penguin and drove the penguin out of town like just forced them out of gotham but doing so with a method to compete with the penguin in order to defeat him but the batman who last brings him here kills him and most likely gets the sample that he needs but he also brings him here to the penguin's hideout which is iceberg lounge the penguin's nightclub on earth zero to tell the penguin that he needs to go see matches malone which is a super throwback because at one point match malone was an actual person who was a hitman for the waterfront mob and prior to that him and his brother like started out in arson and like insurance scams hence the name matches malone but in addition to that he wasn't like a jerk or anything like that but after the time when he was killed when a bullet that was meant for batman had ricocheted and shot matches malone in the heart later batman had used the identity of matches malone in order to go undercover and get into places where malone's mob ties could get him up close to the movers and shakers in the criminal underground which is pretty interesting because with the batman who laughs pointing the penguin back to matches malone he's pretty much telling him to look for batman who at this current time isn't doing so hot but right now with batman who's taking james gordon jr to the waterways in order to determine which route the batman who laughs is gonna take james gordon jr is like look okay i'll try but I, I can't really promise anything and it's pretty crazy to see this because the two of these guys who in normal circumstances like with psychotic james gordon jr and batman not struggling with the joker toxin like together they could be a pretty dangerous team but with both of them not exactly being themselves it just turns everything on its head but at this time with batman 
Batman gets an incoming call from Alfred, he finds out that the Joker has pretty much just hopped off the table, straight up looking like that Operation board game from like the 80s. But he had just pretty much got up, fought his way through Alfred, and left the Batcave. And to where at this point, Batman is just like, you know what? This isn't working. Batman isn't working. And not too long after, when Alfred goes back to the cave and sees all the antitoxins for the Joker Venom broken and just laying on the floor, when Alfred walks in, he sees Bruce building something on the table only to find out that Batman has fully given in, becoming the Earth Zero Batman who laughs. And I'm sure he'll have a better name than that. And I'm telling you, I still got my fingers crossed for the Batman who laughs last. That's still my vote. But I also gotta say, with, with Batman doing this, and us actually seeing him build the visor with the spikes and the bat ears, I really feel like we're getting close to truly finding out how this thing works and how he sees through this thing. Or better yet, how the Batman who laughs sees through this thing. Because you guys have been asking me for the long longest and I truly don't know. But to be honest, at one point I was really considering that it had some type of connection to the Absur Baskin, which I talked about in the Justice League Perpetual video, which is made of Nth Metal and was supercharged because of the events of Dark Knight's Metal. But my theories prior to this point kind of lead towards that type of notion, because I still do believe that both of these visors, if you will, are made of Nth Metal and its capabilities do kind of swing between the abilities of Nth Metal and a bit of Wayne Tech. Like with that, I do also believe that a bit of its design and capabilities have some sort of inspiration from the Absur Baskin, although it may not have the same functionality. And mainly because the Absur Baskin was already a powerful device before the nth metal that it was comprised of was supercharged in Dark Knight's metal. But either way, that'll do it for this one guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Like where on earth, or not on earth, do we go from here? Especially with Jim Gordon having already canceled the Diaxamine 2 program, making it just a matter of time before we see James Gordon Jr and go back to his old ways which just makes me think like how awesome would it be to get like the batman who laughs last with james gordon jr as like his robin Blah. like that would be so sick <laughs> but let me know your thoughts down below and we'll do it again in the next one all right later